Hey guys, welcome to Rough Brown Uncut. Before we get started, I just want you to know that you can actually join in on this podcast. It's live and interactive on Twitch every Sunday around 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to join. Feel free to chat. Come hang. I also want to say there's a bit of an audio issue in this episode. Bear with me on this. It's been resolved for future episodes, but... It is a thing. And if you do like this podcast, feel free to like it, share, and leave a comment on what other things you want me to talk about in the future. All right, love you guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the episode. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of my life. Now, welcome back to season two of the podcast I forgot all about. Um, I I made this podcast years ago uh, before podcasts became like too popular and everyone had one. Um, and then I stopped, I shelved it. It was right before COVID just because everyone and their mother was making a podcast. I just didn't want to be that guy. I'm like, look, does everyone have it? Something important to say, do we need another podcast? Is this something we really need right now? So I'm just like, all right, let me take a break. Let me not focus so much on this. Let me not focus so much on like making a podcast. I already made stupid videos. I already made stupid stuff. I want to shelve this for a bit, but I recently decided that when it got to a point where I wanted to do something for me, you know, when I want to do it for me and just like make it something that I cared about, then I'll go back to doing it. Um, and I kind of just felt like with recent events and just like things in my life, I felt like, yeah, this is something I really want to want to give a shot. And I was trying to figure out a good way to like, do this. So um, originally I just posted everything on YouTube and also a, um, another platform to stream the podcast from. Uh, but then I'm just like, let me just let me make it fun. Let me make it live and interactive because like I love I love my Twitch channel. I love playing video games, but I also love just like talking to people. And I feel like this is the best way we can do it. So like, why not make a live interactive podcast? So this is the first episode that I'm doing this different formu- formula. Um, bear with me if it sucks. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna get through the fields together. Uh, hi, welcome from the UK. Hope you're doing well, hope you're doing good. Um, and thank you. So today's episode is about something that uh, is recent that I won't shut up about. It's heartbreak. It's getting broken up with. It's getting... Um, it's breaking up with someone. It's the end of a relationship, end of losing somebody you love. And it's just not easy in any regard. Uh, whether you're on the receiving end of that, whether you're actually doing it, it's it's always hard. It's heartbreaking. It's um, the, why I'm making this topic. Because uh, something I won't shout out about is I recently had a breakup. And uh, that's funny. I say recently, but like we technically broke up at the end of November, early December. Then I went to go see them at the end of December. Then I went to... <laughs> Then we, uh, I tried to do a no contact rule, but that person wouldn't stop trying to contact me, find any excuse to contact me. February, we were talking a little bit, and then uh, he met somebody, and that's when I, I was just like, oh, all right, I, I can't do this no more. Bye. <laughs> um, Because it is devastating, and for the sake of everyone's privacy, because I don't really want to put, one, I don't like putting my private information on there, and it's because of you bitches. Guys, I remember my first boyfriend years ago on on the YouTube. If you followed me for that long on my first YouTube channel, um, I was a, I was a part of a YouTube couple, and then the people y- y'all were messy. Y'all were messaging that person, just being like, "Oh, you he too good for you? Oh, what are you doing here? Oh," and then messaging me, "Oh, you should stick to your own kind." And I'm like, "Ma'am." Calm down, because I know what you mean by that. And I'm just like, if I was going to stick to my own kind, I would also find a Puerto Rican Native American. Um, Hello. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the podcast. Um, So I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then just like, I got, I was called Tamara. I was called Tamara Landry. I was called Tamara. They were just calling me a white man's whore. (laughs) So hard. (laughs) It's hard being me. Um, But... Uh, that's why I decided after that point, any relationship or any private thing, I'm going to keep to myself. I'm going to keep my relationships private. Uh, I'm not going to post anything about them. I'm not going to, I don't post when I'm in a relationship on, uh, my Instagram, YouTube, anything anymore. I don't, I, cause I'm like, I'm going to have this for me. I'm going to keep my relationship private. I'm going to keep it sacred. I'm going to keep it something that we can both enjoy and something we can both love and experience. So, um, I'd rather just have that privacy, you know? So for the sake of, uh, everyone's names going forward did not put private information. There's going to be three people I'm mostly going to talk about when I'm going into this. And it's going to be my second boyfriend who I was obsessed with. I will name him D. Uh, my uh, third boyfriend, long-term boyfriend we dated for two years, we'll call them C. And then the person I most recently was dating, that person will be named as E. Um, so yeah, heartbreak sucks. <laughs> and I think everyone kind of interpreted it 
interpret it a little bit differently because everyone kind of everyone processes love differently. And also your relationships with people are always different. You never experience the same thing twice. You never experience that same feeling twice. You never experience that same amount of love or admiration twice. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the podcast. Um, you always experience love differently in every regard. And that's always something you always have to keep in mind. Just like every person is a unique experience. Um, every person is something brand new all over again. So some people, they'll get into a relationship or look for a relationship to kind of try to have the same exact replication of something that they miss or something that they used to have because they they idealize that as being love or being uh, what they need or being what fulfills them. But in reality is it really varies from person to person. You never really know exactly where um your journey with another person is going to take you or how it's going to make you feel and how that develops into its own unique style of love. Like I've loved um, several times, dozens of times. I have a wheel of lovers, <laughs> but like I have a, I have a rogues gallery of uh, people I had past relationships with and I love them all in different ways, but I don't love them all in the same exact way. Everyone is loved differently. Um, and it's very rare that I felt the place where I felt like I was in love with somebody, like someone I was deeply like connected with. And when I'm in love with somebody, it becomes cartoonish. It becomes silly. You know, it becomes the fantasy, that fucking shit that like, look, me as a person, I don't really care about um, getting in a relationship or I don't care about marriage. I don't care about having kids. I don't care about having family. Like there's different directions you can take when you get to a certain point in your life. You either A, are somebody who like everything's kind of like you have your goals left out. Uh, that are very much relationship oriented. So you want to, you are in a certain place in your life. You want to meet somebody. You want to have a long-term thing that leads to marriage. And maybe that leads to kids. And maybe that leads to starting a family and living together and spending every day with that person. Blah, blah, blah. The American dream. Um, or you're someone like me, who's on the opposite side of the spectrum, is that your long-term goals do not have any reflection towards a long-term relationship. Um, me personally, individually, I do not have any goals of being in a relationship. Um, it's just not something I feel is a ne necessity at my life. You know, it'd be nice to have, it'd be cool to have, but like, it's not like, I don't need it. Like, I don't need, I don't need no dick. I'm sorry. Like I got some in my drawer. We good. <laughs> but like, um, it's something that would be nice to have. Like, here's the thing. When someone on this route who doesn't have any long-term goals in mind um, of being in a relationship, meet somebody who does. My goals and aspirations when I'm in love with somebody reflects theirs. So when I was in love with the last person I was seeing, and we weren't even dating for that long, but it just felt so natural and real and organic that just, I, and I felt things that I, I can't even tell you how long it's been since I, um, I felt that way for another person. And I, all my goals at that point, my, my long-term goals reflected his. So it's like, I was with him. I went from being just like, oh, I don't really want a relationship. I don't really want to get married. I don't really care about having kids, blah, blah, blah. To, I need to start a family with this man. I need to be with him. I want to wake up every day next to him. I want to smell him. I want to kiss him. I just want to, I wake up every day because we like, um, like when I went to go see him, because it was long distance. I went to go see him. I woke up and I had a crush. I, I had a crush every morning. I just wake up and look at him. And just like, you like me? <laughs> like, I was like flustered like a teenage girl. Um, and that's my thing too. Because like, um, I, this is normally like the case for a lot of people. And it, this is a natural thing is that you have a honeymoon phase. You have this period at the beginning where you're deeply infatuated this, with this person. Um Everything they do just like feels like crack cocaine to you. Like you need a you need a fix. You need an inhaler. Like, oh, when are I to see you again? Oh, I need your cold oh, oh, I need a fix. Like you just you are waiting. You are waiting to see that person again. You cannot live without this person. And then you get to a point where they just become normalized. And then you're just like, well, they're here again. That's cool. I like them, but like I don't need them all the time around. <laughs> like you know, which is natural. It's normal. And some people only like strive for the, um, that feeling. So like, I know someone, like when I go back to like my second boyfriend, D, um, he is somebody like, he's very much like, he's a great person, but he's also emotionally an idiot. Uh, and I can say that we're, we're like, he, he's cool. Um, but 
he is someone who chases after the that feeling, that feeling of just like, okay, the infatuation in the beginning. But when something becomes real or something when th something becomes hard or you have to work towards something, but every relationship is work. You have to work towards some regard. You can't just, you know, find something and you're just like, oh, this is perfect for me. And the mi minute like there's a little bit of like a conflict or something you have to like work towards or work around, be like, oh, I don't want this anymore. See ya. Otherwise, you're just going to be alone because like there's no one, there's never anyone who's going to be completely 100%, never have a problem with ever. <laughs> like that's impossible because you're, when you're in a relationship, you're building two separate lives and trying to make them work as one. Maybe they don't always have to be together. Maybe I always have to be around each other, but you're still molding those lives together. So it's always going to be a thing that you do. Um, so when it comes to just like uh, my state of relationships, uh, me personally, I don't really have a honeymoon phase. And like I said, the honeymoon phase, is like when that or those early steps heart happen and basically the brain chemicals in your brain are just like being just like, oh, oh, I need my fix. Oh, your dopamine levels are acting up. It's actually the same chemical co compound as when you're experiencing a drug ad addiction. Like love and drugs are very much the same thing neurologically. Neurologically? Neuro neurologically. I don't know English. I think that's right. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, so it's the same exact chemical compound. So you're going to feel that addiction. You're going to feel that need for a person. And you're going to act like an idiot because of it. Um, it's just going to happen. <laughs> but which is fine. That's something I've experienced myself. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to me, I, I was explaining to my last person because he was uh, talking about it's like, oh, you know, we're in the honeymoon phase. So it's not always going to be like this. I'm just like, you don't understand. I am always, how I'm with you in the beginning is exactly how I'm with you throughout. I do not change. I do not develop. You are, the, how I feel towards you and how I act towards you is exactly how I am towards a relationship. I'm not saying that like I'm overly affectionate, overly clingy or any of that shit. Cause like, no. Am I romantic? Absolutely. Um, do I like a little bit of romance? Yes. Um, do I expect those things reciprocated to me all the time? Absolutely not. I'm a human. I, I express it the way I do. You don't have to express it the same exact way to me. I don't need an equal exchange. You just have to make me feel special in your own unique way. And that will work. Trust me. Um, but I'm also at a point where I'm a very, um, I'm also a very independent person. So like when I'm at first enter a relationship, I'm not always just like, oh, I need to always be around this person. Oh, I want to know everything about this person. Oh, I just can't live without this person. I want to wear their skin. No, I'm very much a, I like this person. I care about this person, but I love me. <laughs> Okay, so they can do them. I can do me. We'll hang out when we can. We'll meet up when we can. It's no big deal. Like, I don't need to always be around you. And that will stay towards, like, my entire relationship. Like, I just, I'm not that kind of person. Um, I ain't got that dog in me. Still like my time alone. It's very important to have your time alone. And I appreciate that in the beginning of a relationship. So I don't carry that, um, that need to, like, always be with that person after that point in a relationship. So I always kind of stay exactly the same. Uh, there's not really a lot of change. I mean, yes, there's going to be problems and yes, there's going to be issues. And yes, there's, I'm willing to work with things. I'm re really uh, willing to compromise in a certain regard. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't need to always have you. <laughs> like, you can do your own thing. Like, and I expect somebody, if I'm like with a partner, have your own life. Do your own thing. Have your own, you better have your own friends. If you don't have your own friends, that's a red flag. Absolutely. Have your own friends. Have your own life. Have your own responsibilities. I can't be your everything. You can't expect anyone to be your everything in a relationship. And that's why I don't really form such deep dependencies on a person, you know? I just need to let... You just have to make me feel special in your own unique way towards our relationship. And I'm good. That's it. Like, <laughs> that is it. That's all you got to do. The bare minimum, really, is the, how you get me, honestly. Um, but, so the last person I was with they did fulfill that need. They really fulfilled every need that I had, you know? And um, I was only, like I said, I was only in, in love with somebody, like cartoonishly in love. Like everything you see in movies and like everything that you're supposed to feel from movies, TV, books, which are all not real, you know? No one is actually like that. But like, yo, I felt, I felt those feelings. Though. I was like, <laughs> oh. I, um, I felt that three times in my life. The first person, I don't really, I don't mention as canon, but it's a part of the Andrew Lore. Um, just because it's a complicated situation. 
um, and somebody who means the most to me. And I didn't realize I was in love with them till like way after back. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm in love with this person. <laughs> so, um, so I don't, we don't really regard that that much. That's a, that's a conversation me and that person just will never have. <laughs> that's fine. It's better that way. Um, but it's just like, the, the, we, we, it's like an unspoken thing that we know, but we just haven't talked about. And we're just like, we'll, we'll move past it. We're good. Um, and then there is my second boyfriend who we've dated for a brief period of time, uh, just because they had the move. They had to um, go to school somewhere else. And they, they just fulfilled so many needs that I had and just like everyone I had in a person. Because like when I look for a potential partner, it's somebody who not only reflects the best traits I have in myself and admire the most of myself, but also brings out my favorite traits of me. So it's like they make me feel better than I am. And I, I already love me. I think I'm great. I think I'm a 12 out of 10 all the time. But this person just made me always feel better, you know? And same thing with the last person as well, too. Um, and just like really felt, I really felt a strong need to be with that person, the strong one to be with that person. I really, um, you, <laughs> I really, a thousand, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but they were somebody who like really just made me feel just like anything was possible and also a future that I always wanted. Um, so I really had a strong regard to them and I loved them so much, but our relationship wasn't as authentic. Looking back at it now, it was as authentic as, you know, I saw it to be or I wanted it to be. Uh, we had a long back and forth going for years. Like we dated for like maybe this amount of time. And then we were back and forth with nonstop shenanigans for this amount of time for years. And I think in total, because we never took that, um, we never took that proper time away from each other. Uh, it took me about like, honestly, if I'm being really honest with myself, maybe seven years to really be over, you know, actually like get to a point where it's like, I'm actually over this person. I'm over this feeling. I'm over that love for that person. Uh, because we didn't properly take the steps to separate from each other. Like, I would message him, he would message me, and we would just do this whole back and forth exchange or the whole cycle. It was very toxic. The end of our relationship was very just toxic. Um, admittedly, because it's like, I was just like, he was my, he was my drug. <gasps> You're like heroin to me, Bella. And he was just like, ah, Edward. Just like, no, we get, we would that, did that back and forth dance for too long. Whereas like, I get really emotionally invested He'd back off, and then I'd be like, oh, it's fine. I, I, I understand. Maybe we'll see each other again soon. <laughs> Take care. And then he's just, just like, no, baby, come back. I want to be with you, but I don't want to be with you. And I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> like, it was this back and forth dance. It was stupid. Oh, Edward. It was so dumb. Um, it, really, it was dumb. It was dumb. We were young. We were stupid. Um, and I don't think we really had that emotional maturity yet to really, like, take it to be something else at that point so we ended up uh we ended up being okay i wouldn't say necessarily that we're friends now i think there's a lot of limitations there um but we are okay like i am okay with this person and that person's okay with me but it was just somebody that i really had a deep admiration for and actually i think that was the hardest heartbreak i ever had was that even though, like, I, look, I had, was unhealthily obsessed with that person. I already know. <laughs> like, they, my obsession with him was unhealthy. Um, and how he regarded me was also unhealthy. We were not good for each other. Like, and I think the after the relationship kind of showed with that. Like, he did not be, want to become emotionally invested in me. And he restrained a lot of things because of that. And I only saw the good in him and wanted him to be the person I wanted him, I knew he could be. I fell in love with his potential. I fell in love with the potential of trying to have him, trying to be with him. And that was the hardest breakup because, I mean, the hardest heartbreak because he had to break up with me twice. It was the first time when he was moving away and I understood that it was fine. But in my head, I convinced myself that that was the only reason. That was the only reason we were breaking up. That was the only reason we were ending things because of the distance. But it wasn't. It was because he didn't want to invest in something serious and he didn't want something serious to happen with me specifically. Um, not saying that there's anything wrong with me because I mean, it's me. And he's even, he even told me that there's nothing really wrong with me. Even years later, there's never been anything wrong with me. It's just how he is, who he is and how he operates. And I was trying to see something in him that just was not there or not going to be there. And that was a hard thing to do. 
And he broke up with me a second time after our back and forth shenanigans back in 2019. Um, basically just telling me it's like, it's never going to happen between us. He doesn't want anything for me. He basically had to sit me down and be like, I never want anything from this. It could be friends, friends with benefits, but we can never be anything. Like we really dove it into me, which was heartbreaking and was hurtful, but it was also necessary. Um, do you think he was someone avoiding? Yes, absolutely. We'll get into that later. But <laughs> like, absolutely is. Um, and that's something that kind of sank in with me because that's when I tried to take the steps to at least just see that it's never going to happen with this person. And I had to like get rid of that idea, that possible future, um, that something could be or we could be because like the reality is we can't be anything unless he wants it and unless he works towards it because all relationships are work. And that was, I felt devastated. And he felt guilty afterwards because I wrote them this hidden, basically this letter because I'm like fucking the notebook. And I was like, this is why I felt this way. And this is why you feel this way. I just can't believe from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my bottom. <laughs> and he felt guilty. We talked it out. Um, and then just like, it's been years at this point. We're okay with each other. We're cordial with each other. But like, um, there's always going to be like a restraint from us being anything more than just like two people who previously knew each other, you know? Um, so that's just how it is from the bottom of my bottom. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it didn't work. I'm like, what did I say? Anyway, um, and that's something I kind of learned from the last time I was in love, which was my second, uh, my, um, my most recent relationship, uh, which we never became official because we were long distance and he wanted to wait until like we can actually like be in the same plane together. Uh, not plane, like, like, woo, <laughs> like, you know, the, the same area around each other in live, in live, in real person to actually make it an official thing. But um, by the time it got to that point, we were already um, talking about a breakup and then Basically, when I went to go see him and we got to experience each other for like the first time, experience the whole thing and what it would be like. Um, that's basically when he um, everything was confirmed that we were breaking up and it was over and it was hard because um, unlike my first person I was in love with, um, this person is somebody I who just fulfilled everything with me. He was able to talk to me about my issues. He was able to be there for me. He was able to make me feel secure and make me feel safe make me feel good without even trying and without me even like needing him to be there, you know? Um, Cause I'm not someone who like presses so much on another person. I'm someone who would like try so hard to like, you know, get someone's admiration or need validation from another person. I'm very like, I've been, be, I become very self-efficient. So like I kind of self-validate myself, but he just always just did make me feel validated or wanted or everything. Like all my needs were filled, even needs I didn't know I had. Um, were just fulfilled by this person. Um, so it made it really hard uh, because I I loved everything about him. I, and it was a recent thing too, so it's still, it's hard. Um, and I try not to think about it, really. Um, just because he's someone who is an absolute good. He's an absolute good, and I can't even say anything bad about it. And I understand the reason for the breakup. It was not only the distance. We talked about it later on. But um, at that time, I thought it was, okay, same situation as before. It's the distance, you know, maybe if um, we get to a certain point and I can move here and we can try to make it work, you know, we can be together. You know, I still have that mindset where it's like, okay, maybe there's something I can do to like try to fix it or try to make it work. But um, after our most recent conversation, which was uh, after... I find, if you follow, follow me on Patreon, you kind of know the story. But um, after a while, um, I found out that he started seeing somebody. He has a new boyfriend. Um, he's moved on. He's moved on already. And then he, uh, I made an art piece about it because I was feeling fucking terrible. <laughs> you know? It's like, you don't want the person that you're in love with to be like, okay, well, I got someone new. I got new dick. You, 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 your pussy stank. You old. I'm like... But like, you know, um, and I, the, I only found this out because I did some snooping, uh, um, cause like, so, like there were, I think there was an Instagram story posted about something. And then I'm like, all right, I got to go on this big guy's page. Cause I already suspected something. Cause like, this is not the first time I seen this name. Um, and then I went on his page and then I saw comments, I saw posts, um, and then it just kind of like confirmed without 
blatantly stating, but it was very obvious that like this person I was in love with has moved on. Um, and they are done. You know, they've fulfilled, they're fulfilled with somebody else. Um, so I made an art piece when I was feeling very sad, uh, going to based on, cause I make my art pieces based on, um, songs I really like or songs I'm like, I relate to. And this one was happier by Olivia Rodrigo, uh, which is the exact, <laughs> exactly. We broke up a month ago. You've moved on. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> and then, like the lyrics were like, Oh, this song was made for me. That's great. Oh, uh, cool. Um, and I didn't, I didn't take it well. So I like to put all my negativity towards like art or something just in order for me to feel a little bit better about stuff um so i did that um i made an art piece and it was great um and it was on my patreon he saw it he reached out to me basically to assure me that like it wasn't because he needed when i saw his heart i know right yo that song fucking slap oh but um he is uh he reached out to me just to assure me like it's not because he found something better or because he found something that like, um, that I was inadequate in some way, you know, it was just because his needs, what he wants just weren't properly fulfilled with one, our situation with distance and two, just like where we are in each other's lives. And he felt sorry. He felt guilty, but in all honesty, I can't, it was the hard, hard part <clears throat> is that I can't blame him for what he did. I can't blame him for moving on. I can't blame him for wanting to find something to, that fulfills him. I can't blame him for our breakup because he didn't do anything wrong. And I had to assure him that he broke up with me because he didn't feel the proper fulfillment that he needed. Cause like he needs certain requirements. I'm trying not to get as specific as possible. <laughs> like, he has some uh, certain requirements that like, doesn't reflect of where I am in my life or where he is in his life. I like, it's funny. I was always talking to him. Just like, it always seemed like I was more of the mature one or more of the emotionally like stable one, even though like he is very emotionally mature. He's very like, for the most part, sometimes he's just like, bro, <laughs> you're crazy. Like one of his things, I'm not going to be personal, but I'm going to be personal. Like one of his things was just like, ugh, I was like, you know, kind of like when a guy's toxic, like a little bit toxic. Cause like, they just have the best sex. And I'm just like, ma'am, this is the Arby's. Like, what are we talking about? How toxic are you talking? What's going on? What's going on, boo-boo? Um, because like, he likes a little bit of, he likes a little bit of emotional immaturity. He likes a little bit of like, a toxic, he's Hispanic. So like, you, if you date someone from the islands, anywhere in the Caribbean, you're going to get somebody, go, they need someone fiery, spicy. I hate those allegories uh, for fucking people. In, but yes, um, they, they need, they need some oomph, you know, and it's like, I'm funny, I'm charismatic, I'm kind, but like, you know, and like, let, look, I say some absurd shit that will keep you on your toes, but like, emotionally, I'm stable, I'm mature, I'm secure. Uh, and this person also had an anxious attachment style as well, too. Um, so there was some clashing there that I didn't even know about because one, he didn't communicate them properly to me during our relationship. That's, that's on him. But, um, they're just like things I didn't know because all my needs were being fulfilled because like he was just doing everything that I needed for me to make it work. And it worked. It was great. I was like, I was, I was, I was living the dream. I was like, oh, this is joy. I'm great. And this is somebody I, I saw a future with. I would move for like I was planning just like maybe I go down there for two weeks a month because that at that time I worked remote. So it was easy. I could go there for two weeks a month. I'll work there. We'll make it work. Uh, and then just like in the long term, we'll talk about moving in together. All this other, like I saw that going with him so well, like that future was so there. Um, and then I had to deal with the fact that just like that future is gone, you know? And that was, that was the hard part, you know? It's just like, it's not there. And once it became a matter of like another person coming on, and I can't even blame the guy, like the other guy that he's seeing now. Cause he's like, he's like a third party has nothing to do with that. I know some people are just like, Oh, he ain't even cute. He ain't even pretty. I bet his pussy is saying. I'm just like, I don't know nothing about this man. He seems fine. He seems like a guy. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about him. I don't want to know anything about him. And I shouldn't know anything about him. It's not my business. Uh, so I stay away from that, you know? Uh, that's why I, I blocked. Like, I don't like, I don't even know you blocked. Uh, the, uh, my, uh, like, other guy, block, block, the block. I know. I, I don't want, I want to see nothing. I ain't going to see nothing from you. 
Um, just because I know I'm mostly I can I can't go there. Um, but like he assured me, had the conversation, and we talked, and I got really good closure from that. Uh, but it still hurt, you know, just because. And I think a lot of people feel this. Well, two things that people feel from a relationship. One is that a lot of people move on by vilifying their exes or vilifying the people that they um, were previously engaged with so they don't feel that attachment anymore so they can move on. Just like they have to hype themselves up or just like amp them up their traits and then just negate everything about that person. So like I could say X and Y, just like talking about him. Um, oh, he didn't do this or he forgot this or he always blah, blah, blah. And then blah, blah. Like I could talk so much negative shit just to make him feel, look like the villain so I could look like the hero. But that's not reality. Reality is we are both two individuals. We are both two humans. Um, and our relationship is two people. So like we both had good and bad. Like this person maybe had some like maybe mistakes every now and then, but you're never, again, you're never going to be a perfect person who makes no mistakes. Um, so for me, he, he, he was the perfect person for me because he fulfilled everything that I ever wanted. Um, and yes, he forgot certain things and didn't do certain stuff and like, made common human errors, but like they weren't anything that was devastating enough to be like, wow, this person's a fucking asshole. How dare he? No, like I honestly have nothing bad I can really say about this person. I just have to accept the fact that he moved on. And I can't say anything bad about me. Like, look, I'm great. I'm a great partner. I I, I wish I could say something bad. I remember one time I talked about this one's of friends. Um I'm just it was like before I started dating my third boyfriend who we'll talk about in a minute. Um like I I was like I'm curious before I go back to dating let me find out let me get some feedback I talked to a couple of like the big exes I had and just to get feedback uh, I talked to D and he was just like listen bitch never look overthink about how you are in a relationship you are perfect you had nothing wrong with you you are like one of the most perfect people ever and I'm just like I know right <laughs> um I texted my first boyfriend uh Kevin you know him uh, the one ones y'all bullied <laughs> 12 years ago. Um, so I texted him and I was like, hey, just like, you know, we just what were some like my negative traits. And they were just like, um, they're just like, uh, I don't know. I mean, you always uh, posted yourself on social media. And I'm just like, that's a problem with you, boo, not me. <laughs> it's like, but what's my issue? And that was it. I got uh, and because I end up I have realized this is a pattern of mine. I always end up dating deeply insecure people. Uh, either they have an issue with my security in like posting myself and putting myself out there or they put themselves out there for a need for validation. Like I post myself because I like how I look and I just want to show it. I'm just like, hey, look, I look good. Hey, see? I'm great. Even if no one sees it, even if no, I don't fucking care. I just post shit that I want to. I just, do, I do what I want. I don't need validation from another person. Um, validation from a significant other I, I, I enjoy, please, please give me, but like, um, from outside people that I don't know and never met, I don't need someone to tell me I'm beautiful. No one to tell me I'm kind. I know this shit. I know this shit. Okay. But like, you know, I get it. Um, I need, to, hold on. I need to go shower. It's 5 PM here. Oh, enjoy. Enjoy your shower. Uh, mine was X is fearful of waiting and use a new relationship as a shutdown strategy, a way to get out. Um, I understand that as well, too. Uh, I have um, dated someone really like that, which actually was at the end, very end of the relationship I had with C, um, which was my, my third boyfriend. C is my third boyfriend. Um, he um, basically, when relationship was ending with C, he was a friend of mine and we got to know each other. We talked and everything. He actually helped support me through the end of my relationship and was there for me. Confess his feelings for me. Um, and then we end up like, when I was ready, like we started like talking and like seeing if I could build your relationship. And then after like one day, <laughs> one official day, he like told me after like months of friendship, he was just like, oh, I don't really see myself being with anyone long term. You know, I don't, I don't see that for me. It just ate stop for me. And I was just like, okay, you know, that's valid. Fine. I accept that. Um, we'll take a break and then we'll be friends eventually. Uh, and then he, um, like, Three weeks later, he met somebody, and then four months after that, they got married. So, you know, <laughs> that's fun. Um, but going back to E, the last person I'm dating, um, he, um, it was a heart, it was a heart heartbreak because one, I couldn't vilify him. I can't vilify him and make myself look like the hero. I think we're both equals. 
Um, and then two, another thing that people do a lot is that they always, um, they have to, I had a point, damn, I almost forgot. I hate that there's a lie because like y'all, y'all can see me fumbling in real life. So I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I had points. I, I had notes. Um, is that the end of a relationship, which is the hardest part is that a, the end of a relationship, you always have to think in terms of forever. Um, because a lot of people hold out for that hope that maybe it's temporary. Maybe this breakup is temporary. If you find somebody that you truly love and you feel fulfilled and you feel all the, the your needs are being met and you feel, feel you feel completely fulfilled with this person, and even in the relationship ends or they break up with you or you have to break up with them, you think that's temporary. You uh, part of you wants to hold out and say, okay, well, this is only for now. Um, I'll just cope for now. I'll kill time for now. And then I can eventually be back with this person. You know, we can eventually get back together or we can actually be happy together. We can build a future together. But the reality is you have to think in terms of forever when it comes to the end of a relationship. If you are going through a breakup or being broken up with, you have to think I am losing this person forever. Um, this person doesn't want me forever. This person no longer wants to be with me forever. Um, and that that is it. And that's that was one of the hardest parts about this breakup because like I was so deeply in love with him um, that I couldn't bear the fact that I can't have that future. That future that I envisioned with him is gone forever. And that's what you really have to kind of do to get over a relationship like in a healthy way. It's painful. It's fuck, it fucking hurts. But like you have to kind of do that in order to um, really properly move on. Um, so like, yeah, I just think just like, and that's why it was so hard because like, I'm losing this person forever. This happiness I know with this person is forever. Like we will never be together forever. Um, it was devastating. It, it really is devastating when like you really see a clear, proper future and you know what you want. Um, when I'm in love with somebody, it's because I'm a hundred percent sure about them. Like I'm a hundred percent sure this, this person I want is a hundred percent sure this person I want to be with. Um, and that's that's always it, it always sucks <laughs> you know in other in no other words but it fucking sucks um that that's just not the case because like if that person is breaking up with you and that person doesn't want to be with you anymore it's forever you know and yes there's a possibility just like some that way down the line maybe our lives line up and just like oh hey you're single i'm single let's just let's just see how it goes you know when we get back together but you can't think about that what if you can't think about that maybe because if you keep holding on to that maybe you will never move forward. And that's what I did on my second XD. Um, I loved him and I saw a future with him. And even though we were broken up, I was just like, okay, we're going to get back together. It's no, it's a matter of time. Oh, well, we're going to, we're just, it's because of the distance. And then he moved back home. And I was like, oh, well, you know, it's just because he's busy. And then like, we lived 15 minutes away because I moved closer to him. He's like, oh, you know, he just has things going on and he's like this and his parents are like this. So it's really hard for him. No. He does not want to be with me forever. And, and during that time, and mind you, in the course of that, that was in between like the span of like five years of us going back and forth or like four years going back and forth. Um, 2016, I'm doing math. 2016, about like three years. I would like going back and forth together. Um, so like, you have to think in terms of forever. Um, and I was dating other people. I was talking to other people. And for me, which is very selfish is that everyone I was dating in between was felt temporary. They felt like, even though I like these people, I care for these people, these people have meant some of them meant something to me, you know, but it was temporary. So when it was over, I was, I was fine with it because I was still, I could go back to messing around with D. Um, because for me, D was my true love. D was the one I was going to be with. I was going to get with D. D was my destiny. Oh, the D was for destiny. Destiny D. Um, and like, I, I, I was holding out for that. So like, I was waiting, I was always constantly, I caught myself waiting for a text or a call or something from him just to say that he was ready or he wanted to meet up or anything, even when I was dating other people. And that's not fair to them. Like that was very selfish of me. So like, that's why I, um, now I, I wait to properly heal in order to actually like try to move forward with somebody else. Like, I don't want to just move directly. Like after I've you mean Eve split, I wasn't just gonna go right into a relationship or be with somebody because like I still have these deep feelings for him. So it, it's not I wouldn't feel right being with somebody because I know I would still 
kind of be holding out for E and also like at the same time trying to look for E in other people. Like it's, I have to accept the fact that it's, it's, he's gone forever and that's just it. You know, even if it's not, even if like in life and destiny and in the long span of like however long I live, it might not be forever. You have to conceptualize the idea it's forever. <laughs> like you're, you're never going to see that person again. That's it. And you know, we live in two different countries. We probably will never see each other uh, unless there's a thing that comes up, but like probably not. <laughs> um, so that's it. Um, and I also, when it came to him moving on, I have to accept the fact that like this person that he's with now is his person forever. Like this is the person he's going to be with forever. This is the person he's going to marry. This is the person he, he's going to have that future with. And it's so hard seeing somebody else have that future that you want. Like there's somebody else um, spending time with him while he's cooking in the kitchen and uh, talking about his day or talk about any insecurities he has or someone else giving him advice, someone else spending, uh, spending the nights watching anime with him, like somebody else doing everything I always wanted to do with him or somebody, all some of the things I did do with him, you know? It's not my place anymore. It's somebody else's place and that's forever. And that was hard. Um, now to talk about my third dwarf, because there's another thing about heartbreak is in ter- uh, thinking of the terms of forever, I'm going to talk about my boyfriend, C, who is... One of my closest friends, I what I always describe us as just like uh, Magneto and Professor X, bitter ex boyfriends who are just playing chess, and that's it. Like, um, the thing about C is just like I deeply love this person. Like, I love this person, and I, I, and it's one of the only people I really feel like I was genuinely like genuinely loved. I didn't have to question it. I didn't have to um, think about it. I didn't need, need the validation per se. But like, he just I just always felt loved by him. I never had to question it. Um, but the problem is we are very fundamentally different. Like we had so many differences that because I can't get too personal about him because like he has, let to put it in a layman's terms, basically it, the way he loves and the way he shows love, the way he shows emotions and feelings operates different than most people. I'll put it that way. Um, not in like a, a, a bitter way or anything, like how he sees the world and how he perceives information is a lot different than other people. Um, so he's just different. Um, and that came to play a little bit in our relationship. Yes, it was more strained. And yes, I'd do more work. And yes, I had to, um, kind of, kind of teach him how to be in a relationship <laughs> during that time, basically, um, to like things that you would like. Uh, the average everyday person would see as like the bare minimum is just like, it's like bra- groundbreaking for him. You know, he never, th- this is this brand new to him. Um, so I had to teach him that stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, that part was exhausting, but it's fine. I grew past it. But the thing is that we are just two fundamentally different people. If you want a relationship to work, you have to have a variety of things lined up. No, you don't always need the same interest. Like I don't need somebody else who likes anime or cosplaying or will go to conventions with me because I can do those things by myself. It's fine. You just have to accept the fact that I like those things and be able to like be willing to like, you know, it's just like entertain the idea of it. But you don't have to, I don't need somebody to be involved in everything I love. Like some things are just for me and that's fine. I can accept that. Uh, and same thing with you. Like, if you want to do something or do your own thing or have your own friends or anything, you do you. That's fine. Like, I'm a very morning person. Most people today are night people. I am okay with them going out at night, going out to the clubs. If they want to be dancing on somebody else, that's fine. It's whatever. I don't care. But like, just come home. <laughs> you know, I'll uh, come home and I'll like, I'll, I'll give you a little sun in the morning. <laughs> um, do you see a pattern in the people you attract? I will get to that. I will 100 percent get to that because yes. Um, but this person, um, he just didn't, we just didn't have the same morals and ethics and um, long-term goals that line up. And those are things that you need in the foundation of any relationship. You need to have similar morals. You need to have similar, similar ethics. You need to have long-term goals that work towards something because a relationship is work and you're working towards something. If you guys have different long, long-term goals and how that ends up, then there's no point for the journey. The journey is not going to work. And we've had countless conversations. We've had um, times in our relationship that we had m- said multiple times that this isn't working, but we had still continued because we had a deep love for each other, you know? Um, and the reason why I, I, I don't include this person in like my list of people that I was deeply in love with is because 
in order for our, our relationship to work, I had to restrain a lot of things. I had to love differently than how I normally love per, a person. I had to perceive things differently than I normally would. I had to be more lenient towards a lot of things than I normally would. Um, so I never really, I didn't get to fully be myself in that relationship. And that did take a big toll on me because like, if you're not being able to be yourself in a relationship, it does do damage to you. And I have, um, I, I've talked about this before. I've um, apparently I have a BPD. Who knew? A uh, very uh, high functioning, quiet BPD. Um, that's treated. We're good. Um, but because of that, like, um, I had a loss of identity when I was with this person, and I didn't like who I was. I didn't like um, how resentful I became, how angry I got, how like just like annoyed I always was, how like I just the person could do like something sweet and kind. I just was so sick of him. Like you know. Uh, I didn't like who I was. I was not me anymore. I didn't know who I was. And there was times I had um I had a complete breakdown, you know, trying to find who I was. Did you say BBD? No, nah, BBD. BPD. <laughs> High functioning BPD, not BBD. No, maybe a BBL. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so we ended up um I ended up just like losing myself. And one thing about me is I love me. I can't lose this. <laughs> So, and I lost, I lost who I was. So that was really what caused the end of our breakup because I, towards the end of it, when I knew it was done, I was doing things and saying things I normally, I would never say or do. Like, um, I was becoming like last couple of months at the end of the relationship and I knew I, I, I had to get out. I was just like, I became more flirty towards other people. I was like looking for, I was already outsourcing just like, okay, what else is out there? I was already like looking towards the future of just not being with this person. And there were days where we had like really good days. I was driving home and just like, person so sweet and so nice i love this person i hope he finds someone nice and i'm like oh shit i'm supposed to be that person this isn't the person for me. <laughs> like i was fucked up towards that end of and um it's not only that just like they and not to again not painting him as the, the hero or the villain but it's like they also weren't the best to me as well too because of our misalignment and morals and ethics like they're all he always made it seem like there was a moral hi hierarchy there and i was just never at that point, just like I, I always, in a way, made him feel like he was never enough, and I didn't try to. I felt sorry about. It. I always, always during the relationship, apologized about it. Um, but he unknowingly always made me feel like I was too much in like every regard of me as a person, and that's really what it came down to. Um, so when I knew I had to break up with this person, and which brings me to the other part of my heartbreak coming from the other side, is that. I had to accept the fact that it was forever when I knew I had to break up with this person. And it took a while to really like accept that part is that I'm losing this person forever. Um, so it became an Esther Pearl. Absolutely. Y'all, I love, I love, I love her. I love, I'm actually like, uh, I'm by her book. So, <laughs> so I know exactly who you're talking about. I fucking love this woman. Um, but pretty much, um, and I'll, I'll get to your comment about the, uh, feel for the next, but, Pretty much, he, um, I had to think about just like, okay, am I willing to lose this person forever? Am I losing, to, willing to lose his friendship forever? The, our moments together, our laughs together. Am I willing to lose, um, his friends, his family that I became so close to and his friends and family would always admire how much work I put into the relationship and always just like, they knew it was a lot because of how, who the person was and how he operates because they know he operates differently because he has different needs. Um, so it's like how rare I was and how important I was to this person. They always assured me that, you know, and was I willing to lose that? Was I willing to lose the connection with these people? Was I willing to lose everything that we built so far? And that's why it became so hard to break up with this person. But then I also had to think of it in this way. Am I willing to lose myself forever? Am I willing to lose my happiness forever? And when it came to that, when I started thinking that way, that's when I, I knew I had to break up with this person. I had to end this person and be okay with the fact that we might never see each other again. And that was hard because like, it sucks. Like, you know, breaking up with somebody is just as hard as getting broken up with. But here's the thing when you break up with somebody, um, you have to be brutally honest about why it's not working and why it doesn't work. Don't try to pacify. Don't try to be like, don't try to reflect and be like, oh, it's me. Oh, there's a problem with me. Or like, oh, I'm not feeling this way. 
No, you have to not soften the blow. Let the person know exactly what's not working. That way that person can work on what they need to work on. And also that person just knows because I think even when we're breaking up with somebody, we try to protect them. We try to protect that person from being hurt. We try to not see ourselves as the villain. But you have to be. You have to actually make it clear that we're not working and we will never work. Because if we were able to work, we would work. We would be able to put in the work and we work. We've had several conversations. We've tried so hard. We've gone back and forth. We did the roller coaster. It wasn't worth it. I was losing myself. And that person, because of his, how he is, he didn't really require that much. But at the same time, he also needed somebody who was able to fulfill his needs and fulfill his wants and be able to not have a lot of expectations in a relationship that I had, you know? So I, it was hard. It was, it was actually one of the hardest breakups I've ever had. I think that was like the most, like one of the hardest that actually, yeah, like maybe the hardest breakup I've ever had. Um, and we eventually were able to reconcile and become like friends, but even like our, and I'll talk about being friends with exes. That's a whole different episode. We, woo, because it is, in, 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 long story short, yes, you can be friends with the ex, but <laughs> there is a big but. <laughs> there is a big but. Do not try to become friends with all your exes. Do not try to keep all your exes close. But certain ones, it makes sense. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, at a different episode, different point. Um, but going back to my relationship with E, it was the same thing at that point because when you break up with somebody, you have a choice, but there's always the third option. Let's say this person really broke up with me because he had things he had to work on or there was something about him that he wasn't fulfilled with or something he wasn't happy with. Um, there's three options he has. Let's say like he had really had to work on himself. So there's A, he continues to feel the way he does and just pursues a relationship with me. With that option, he leads to resenting me. He leads to, if anything was wrong, it's my fault. He uh, feels like he got into a relationship too fast. That Sometimes will lead to a person either leaning off pack or going, being um, promiscuous to other people, straining away from the relationship and straining away from that person. Like he would lose love for me if he continued to be in a relationship. So when he, uh, when the last time he spoke, uh, I reassured him that he did the mature thing of breaking up with me. Because when you feel like you're not fulfilled, and that's the second option, and when you feel like you're not fulfilled, you feel like there's something deeply inherently like missing with you. And you feel like you can't bring that into another part of your relationship or you can't bring that into a relationship, then yes, break up with that person because you need to work on you, you need to focus on you. And if you don't focus on you, if you come into a relationship not complete or not as a complete person, the relationship will never be complete. You'll never be complete or healed. And then there's the third option. The third option is the one that everyone kind of excuse over is that you... Feel the way you do and you allow your partner in to try to help and support you. If you need space away, if you need time away, if you need to talk, have that person be your person to support. You can still go through your own self journey of self-discovery. You can still go through your own needs and wants and find out who you are. But that person will be able to support you and help you in any way possible. Um, that is the third option. And that's the option that sometimes people kind of like skip because they don't, they want to A, don't want to inconvenience the other person. So they're just like, oh, I'm fucked up. Let me leave this person alone because a lot of people feel this. And I fucking am so fucking sick of hearing this shit is that this person's too good for me. I don't want to be with this person because I don't feel good enough to be with them. I feel like this person deserves better. I feel like I am not at the level to be with this person. Like they always put themselves down because they compare themselves to their partners. And I've seen this multiple times. I've experienced this multiple times. They feel like that person is on a pedestal. That person deserves the best. That person's so pure hearted. That person's kind. That person fulfills all their needs. That person is the perfect person for them. But they're just like, I still feel something in it. I don't feel like it's going to work because this person's too perfect and makes me feel insignificant and uh, makes me feel less than because of how perfect they are. So then they just gave away that person. They're just like, I don't want it anymore. It's not you, it's me. I'm just like, 
that's stupid. I'm sorry. Look, here's my thing. When I'm dating somebody, I naturally feel like they're too good for me. Even if they're not, I feel because like they fulfill me. So like, I feel like they're too good for me. This person is great for me. So I make the conscious decision of being like, let me be better for this person. Let me, let me be the best for this person because this person deserves the best. Let me be the best. If this, if I feel like this person deserves the best, let me be the best for them. (laughs) It's like, it's just, I don't get it. That's like winning the lottery and being just like, oh, I don't, I don't deserve this $1 billion. Here you go. You take it. That's stupid. Why would you give away a billion dollars that you won because you don't feel worthy of it? That's dumb. I would never break up with somebody because I feel like they're too good for me. That is the stupidest reason. And I've had people tell me that multiple times, both some different people. And I talk about a specific person. I mean, multiple people. I'm like, that is so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. I understand you needing a break to work on you. That's fine. But like, Allow that person to be able to support you. If you feel like if that's the re- true reason and you feel like it's actually like so just like you have stuff to work on and you don't want to drag this person down, talk to that person, communicate with that pers- person because that person can support you, you know? And if it does get to the point where like you feel like you were too much for that person, then have that conversation. And if that leads to a breakup, that's fine. But if you just ignore that and just like let that person pass by, again, you have to think of the concept of forever. You're not shelving this person. You're not, uh, letting that person go for now and then maybe pick things up when you're at a better place. You are losing that person forever. That person's not coming back. Cause like maybe if that was the reason me and he split up, maybe just like, okay, he's dating someone else. He's doing all those things. Cause he's somebody like he, look, there's being alone and being lonely. I mean, being a, no, there's being alone and being able to be by yourself. This person is, well, he, he can be by himself. He can do things by himself, do his own things, live his own life, but he can't be alone. Like when I met him, he was, and we were friends and he was, I was giving him relationship advice about this guy he was seeing. And then we immediately started dating after that. And then after we broke up, he immediately started dating someone else and then started dating someone else after that. And then he said, oh, I'm going to take a break away from dating people. And that immediately got into a long-term relationship with the guy he's seeing now. So I'm like, bruh, <laughs> like not to, again, not anything ill towards him, but like certain people, just cannot deal with the fact of being alone, being able to completely not have that emotional support, not have that, um, that, that need that we seek in others for a relationship. I can, because I, I've been alone all all my life. (laughs) So a lot of my coping mechanisms are completely self-soothing. I learned to self-soothe. So like I'm able to be alone. I mean, do I feel lonely? Absolutely. Why does I feel lonely? Um, but I'm able to self-soothe to get to the point where I'm okay. And I can always reach out to friends and family and what have you and surround myself with people I love. But like, you know, sometimes it doesn't, again, like there's certain needs of relationship that can't be fulfilled all by yourself. But, um, you know, you kind of, you learn to cope. You can learn to kind of like deal with it. But certain people can't do that. And that's something that I'm okay with. That's something that's fine. That's who that person is. It's not who I am. And that's basically that. Um, and (laughs) yeah, just like if he, let's say that person, let's say E that like three years later, like he's just like, okay, I'm, I I worked on myself. I'm ready to be with this person who I really loved and really cared about and know really loved me. I might not be available anymore. (laughs) I won't be there. Yeah. I, yes, I will always love this person. I always loved anyone I ever loved. Like, but the love changes because people change. I'm not who I was. Two years ago, I'm not who I was. Five years ago, I'm not who I was. I don't even know who I was 10 years ago. I don't know that man. Who that man is? Not me. I don't know her. Um, but who I am now, I mean, who I was like a couple months ago, I'm someone who was like, hello, how you doing? Um, I was someone who is deeply in love with this person. Like for me, the me I am now, this is the person I want to marry. This is the person I want to be with. This is the person I want to spend my, the rest of my life with. This is the person I can build a future with. This is the person I can see myself having kids with. And that's something I, it's rare, you know? Um, but who I will be a month from now, a week from now, a year from now, might not be that person anymore. We might be two different people at that point. So we may not, you have to think in the concept of forever when you're letting somebody go. If you're letting somebody go, it's the concept of forever. You are losing that person forever. And I think some people forget that, you know, because I, I see this all the time when um, people break up and then the initiator of the breakup 
and we'll come back months later or a year later and just like try to rekindle things or start something new. And that person's moved on. That person's a different person now. That person's at a different uh, point in their life. Um, I literally get excited and giggled <laughs> the way he greeted me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I So I might not be the same person. This person might not be the same person. And to be honest, um, I just started recently because after taking time and like working on myself and everything from the breakup, um, I'm getting to the point where I'm okay with the idea of dating. You know, I'm okay with the idea of dating. Dating is all mm, different story. But I'm okay with the, why is it that though? Uh, which part? But um, yeah, so I'm okay with the idea of um, not, I, I'm okay with the idea of possibly being with somebody. And like, to be honest, if I'm honest with myself, there is somebody I kind of like. Am I going to pursue it now? <laughs> no. In similar situation, because I have a type, my type is if you live miles away, if you live states away, if you live countries away, y'all, let me hit. <laughs> if you live 15 minutes away, I'm like, I don't know about this. <laughs> Um, like this person again. I think we're at similar points in our lives. I think things line up, but we ge geographically are not in the same place. So I don't think we're we will pursue anything um romantically. But we don't know. But that just proves to the point that's just, just like I'm at a point where I'm ready to experience the idea of being with somebody else and having a future with somebody else. So again, like when you lose somebody or when you um, get broken up with or have to break up with somebody, you have to think the concept of forever, even if it hurts. Um, because that person just might not be there anymore. And going back to my future podcast, um, when it comes to being friends with your exes, even if you care about this person, some people you cannot be friends with. And it's hard. It sucks. But like, it's true. Sometimes you date people and then they're gone. They're, they were moments in your life and there's no going back. Um, Yes, I would lucked out where I'm like pretty cool with a couple of exes I dated, but some people are just people who show up on my Instagram and we had an experience once and we've never talked since. And that's that's just how it is. And the, the way I feel for this person, um, I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where, where we will be friends because you cannot be friends with an ex or you can't be friends with somebody they have deep feelings for. Uh, even if they're like residual, even if I do move on, you can't really take that risk, you know, of just like being able to feel that again, have those fires reignite for that person, especially when you're moving on or you moved on or, or you're with somebody else. It just, it's not the same, you know. Um, so going back to what you're saying. So to people who break up with you want to come back, um, it's because... Uh, kind of an earlier statement, I think right before you uh, got here. Um, people do that because they were not at a place to actually do the work towards, a, I mean, multiple reasons. Again, everyone's different, but like a lot of things I see is that people weren't at that point when they were feeling breakup, weren't willing to be at a point to either compromise or do the work to make it work with that person. Um, so at the time, maybe the issue was bigger than it was or it was something that couldn't be resolved. But when they grew past that and matured and they realized that they missed out on something from something that they could have worked on and they could have made work, they try to go back to that person. They try to reignite something that already previously happened with this person um, because they were comfortable. They felt that need. They felt that want. Their needs were fulfilled, but they maybe just missed out on one or two things. Because sometimes people think in relationships, they think the concept of checking off boxes. So like, if this person checks off all these boxes, then just that's great. But there, there's one box that's just not checked off. Then you're just like, maybe I'm going to find that somewhere else. Maybe someone else will trigger that box. And then they they try to find out someone else who uh, checks all the boxes. You will never find anyone who checks all the boxes. That's You shouldn't look at people as checklists because uh, everyone's an individual. Everyone does things differently. Um, so some people do that. And when they realize this, it's too late. And they try to come back later on. And I, I, I remember seeing fucking, there was a TikTok thread of just like um, a little list of like girls who were just like dating guys who were like in love, like they were in love with these guys. And then the guy broke up with them. And then le years later, months later, what have you, there was like, yo, it's always been you. It's always been you. They had three kids at that point and a wife. And then I was like, oh, because they realized at that point, they could have just worked with the person in order to make the relationship work. Uh, there was nothing fundamentally wrong with the relationship, but they felt there there wasn't because a 
they were out of the honeymoon phase, so they had to actually put in work. B, they weren't self-fulfilled with themselves, so they took it out on the relationship and on the partner. So they just said like, okay, the other person is the reason why it's not working. Or C, they just like, they wanted to find something else that checked off the boxes. And they realized, oh shit, boxes can never be fully checked off with anybody. I should have been with this person. I fucked up. And here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes that works. And you guys, your lives line up again and you can get back with that person. And that's cool. But a lot of the times you just have to move on because again, you're, if you guys were not at a good point back then and willing to do the work or trying hard or just like willing to try to like compensate for the other person or, um, you just were experiencing levels of toxicity because of it. You have to move on because you should not be that person. If you were with somebody in the past who made you feel less than, you shouldn't go back to them. Never should. Never date anyone who makes you feel less than. So I want to address the um, this question before about um, this. All right, yeah. So about uh, Miranda's ex. Mine was. Let's see. My my ex was. Uh, my ex is fearful, avoidant, and used to use a new relationship as a shutdown strategy. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I talked about that. Uh, do you see a pattern with the pattern in the people you track? Yeah, I do. Um, it's kind of funny because, like, I feel like I have a strong, um, I have a strong. Uh, I'm trying to word this right. I don't know why my words got fumbled for a second. <laughs> um, I'm trying to. What was I saying? Oh my God, I completely, I completely spaced. That's crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I fully believe in being the person that you want to date. Like if you want a specific kind of partner, you want certain needs in a partner, be that person. Let that par person be you. And then you will attract a person like yourself. Because I feel like that normally happens. And the worst case scenario is you guys always, um, people usually uh, will want something in a partner and try to seek that and try to find it. And then they just end up getting their heartbroken because it's usually somebody who fulfills that need in a way, but not all their other needs necessarily. So like, I have a friend who is very kind, very sweet, very one of the best people ever. Uh, so kind hearted, willing to do anything for this, uh, like any of the people they're dating or anything. Like they are a sweetheart. So they want somebody who is supportive, makes them feel loved um, and like shows them kindness. When she meets these people, and hasn't done the work to like be that person that she wants within herself, she ends up meeting guys who takes advantage of her. They take, a, I mean, they make her feel kind and loved and everything, but they also take her money. They take her time. Um, they take her patience. And it's, this just leads to a stressful situation. She had to take one guy to court. Like, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not great. So it's like, if you really want to be with a specific type of person, be the person that you want to be. Be the person that you, you want to be with and you're drawn to that. So I fully believe in that. Um, and I try to do that. Like, I feel like I'm at a place in my life where I am the person I want to be with. You know, I am like, I want somebody who reflects the best traits I have myself, but also brings out my best traits in me. So like somebody who makes me feel, again, like, like I said with um, both D and E, just like somebody who makes me feel 120% rather than 110. <laughs> um, and I feel like in a way I get that, but I don't get all of that. Um, so I don't really realize it until like after it's over, but like I do have a habit of going with people because, um, not because, but like I end up meeting partners who have some deep and rooted insecurity. And that's because I'm a very, in a way, like I'm a very secure person, but also I'm always, I always want a person to feel special, you know? So I always try to make them feel special. So if you're someone who is either anxious, has an anxious attachment style, or you are somebody who like needs like, external validation, I'm the perfect person for you. Cause like, I'm just going to give you that. I'm going to make you feel kind. I'm going to make you feel wanted. I'm going to make you feel just like, you know, I'm going to make you feel special. I'm going to give you the validation you need. Um, I realized that's something that I, um, I should probably kind of like work a little bit on. Cause like, I'm not saying I, I do the most, <laughs> you know, but I do make a person feel special. Um, so that's something I kind of have to back away from. Just like, okay, like let that person make me feel, per uh, um, let that person make me feel special. I mean, which they all have, they all have made me feel special, but their insecurities do play a point because just like when you're deeply insecure 
and you're dating somebody who makes you feel less than just because they're them and just because they're like, um, they don't have insecurities. They nothing really bothers them. They're chill. They're relaxed. They're willing to work with you. They seem perfect, and you feel like you can't deal with that when you're an insecure person or have insecurities. You're willing to toss that aside because you feel insignificant. You feel like, oh shit, I can't give this person what they. I can't reflect that. I can't reflect that. There's something wrong with me. I can't reflect that. I gotta let it go. Um, which again, personally, I'm just like it's dumb. But I understand if you have insecurities, like you can't, it's hard because you're going to constantly keep comparing yourself to your partner, um, which is something I always get. Like I always get that. Um, people always think that I'm too good for that. I wish, I wish, I wish when I would go back and talk to my exes, they gave me like negative feedback. They're like, you do this too much. You do this. And I'm like, no, it's just, inse- it's just insecurities. I'm like, okay. Cause I'm not an insecure person. Like I've worked on myself. I'm just like, I'm, I don't care. I don't give a shit what other people think about me. I just don't. So like, I don't really have insecurities. Um, so it's like, whatever I put myself on the internet, my butts on the internet. You can Google my butt. It's right there. Like, come on. <laughs> so I, I don't really have insecurities. So like, I always end up dating insecure people because I'm willing to, I'm willing to be that sense of security for both of us, you know? And that's the thing too. I need to be with somebody who is actually secure, who actually has that security in, because when it comes at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I said what I said. And when you really think about it, <laughs> but um, basically life is all about choices and relationship is about choice. Because um, life is just a series of choices that you consciously make given your exact situation. Uh, so you can choose the, uh, what you want to eat tomorrow, where you're going to go tomorrow, what you want to do. If you don't want to go to work, you can, if you, if you do want to go to work. Uh, I mean, there's going to be repercussions for whatever you choose, but you get the choice, you know? Um, and then uh, same with relationships. You can ch- you choose every day to be with that person. Every day is a choice. Like you choose who you want to wake up next, next to every day. Every single thing you do in a relationship is choice. So that's what you got to do. I want someone who chooses me every day, you know? And look, I'm like, I'm an open relationship, different story. Because it's like, look, look, because like my me and E were like in an open thing because he lived like where he lived and I live where I live. So I'm like, well, let's be real. We're adults. Um, so it's like, I was fine with the open relationship because like, I think he loved me. He knew he cared about me. But if he wanted to like, well, if he wanted to just like spray his goo somewhere, I'm like, all right, whatever. I just don't want to know about it. Whatever. That's a different story. But like still at the end of the day, even though that person's doing whoever, they're choosing you. They choose to be with you, you know? Um, and I'll talk about open relationships later. But um, I need somebody who actually chooses me and will constantly keep choosing me. Uh, that's the important thing. You need somebody who like chooses you. Uh, Cause life is love is a choice. Love is a choice. Relationships, relationships are a choice. You just have to actually have somebody who constantly keeps choosing you. They can't just shelve you or choose someone else and think they can choose you later. No, it's just that you make your choices and then you can continue, continue and pursue with your choices. Some people can never make a consistent choice and they're just going to keep choosing other people until they realize that it's too late. And other people, they're going to choose. They're going to choose you. You just got to look out for the people who uh, actually choose you. Um, they say you must love someone in their love language as they do. Yes and no. I would think what love language is. I've talked about this a little bit before and now I won't take that long because I got in this soon. Because uh, <laughs> love languages are real to an extent. Because <laughs> like, they were created by this. I forget. I I remember I said this on a live stream. I I, I got confused with the bees. I said like a business analysis, a buddy system. It was a, a um biblical studies guy. Uh, and just like which to an extent, there's some truth to it. Just like okay, yeah. How there's certain ways how people determine and interpret love, and that's true for everyone. There's certain things you do that how you show love, and there's certain things that you receive and how the other person shows love. Um. These categories, though, are just like they're very, they're pretty askew, and they're pretty just like because like there's other there's other things you can consider love language as well too. My love language is laughter and humor. You have I work on improv. Like you, if you can yes and me, if you can add on to my joke, if you can add on to this like giant political statement I'm saying, if you can add on to shit that I'm doing, and just like we're able to like be at an equal level, I'm just like my panties off. You gonna get it. You go like we gonna get messy. Just like, hold on, we've been out right here. We've been out right here. The kids aren't home. We're good. Um, Cause like, that's me. I was just like, you make me laugh. I want to tee out them draws. Oh, 
But like, um, and there's other things that could, people consider a love language as well, too. Also, the guy is very homophobic. Like, he's just, I'm like, look into it. Homophobic, man. The inventor of like the love languages, very homophobic. And a lot of the concepts from um, the love languages do come down to just like, um, just all, all, all religious practices and well too, and just like how people determine love based on, be, based on biblical studies, uh, which I love biblical studies. Like I'm an atheist, but like, fuck, I love the Bible. I fucking love the Bible. That, sh- that shit's messy. <laughs> and then the stories that were excluded from the Bible, messy. I love it. Yo, God's a fucking mess. I love him uh, as a character. The, the old, old, old school God, old Genesis God, fucking villain. I love him. Uh, anyway, uh, um, Let's see what else we got. I'm um, just addressing the rest of this question. <laughs> One for the door. Um, I read uh, Esther's State of Affairs. That's what I'm reading. Uh, you haven't yet read Invading Captivity. I have to read that too, y'all. Esther's? Oh, she's good. Um, do you find that you act the therapist roles in your relationships? Yes. <laughs> um, I did, although I was right almost all the times it became toxic. Yeah, um, I usually do. Just because... Um, I do. I usually do have more of the secure attachment style, and even though I'm a pretty ne- neurodivergent myself, I'm usually the less neurodivergent. <laughs> so okay, um, so I'm able to kind of cope and help with other with other people, and doing so fulfills something in myself where I feel cope and I feel um. So it's like it's a means of projection, really. Um, when you basically feel the need to like help somebody in order to fulfill yourself. Um, I mean, yes, I'm already self fulfilled, but you know, it adds on to it. I like. I will admit to that. I do have a fault with that. Um, let's see. All right. Oh, this one. I waited seven years after my first relationship to be with somebody else and be ready mentally, which is understandable. You got to take time for yourself to actually work it out. I worked on myself to become a better and strong person. I got into a relationship after only one year and a half and a half. She said, I don't have any feelings for you anymore. With our, we used to be friends before dating, before we broke up, there were signs. She never made time for me. I was literally begging for her to give me just whenever. Also, she was my first girlfriend after coming out. That's so hard. It really is. It really is. Like, I, I hate it. Um, because your first relationship always feels more real. And not to put it anyway, but always feels more real than it is. Uh, it always feels like it's it always feels like a forever relationship. Like my first relationship, it did feel like I had never been in a relationship before, so I can never compare. But it felt like, you know, this was this was it. This was it. Even though like I kind of knew like halfway through and we dated for two years, long distance. But I was just like, that's the point where we're, we're probably going to break up. Like I knew it. I said that to my friends once. I'm like, long term goals don't seem to align. Like I picked up on this earlier, but I still pursued the date. Um. So then like he was trying to break up with me, but couldn't make the words. I was just like, do you want to break up? And he's like, yeah. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Love the guy. He's a sweet kid. But, um, you know, it, it's always hard because just, just like when you feel like the end of the relationship's happening and just like when it's your first true love, your first true love is hard to get over. Um, because it's somebody who just, you really see, see a future with, you really build something up with, you really just like want it to work and you're willing to do anything to make it work. So I'm glad you actually took the time to like take a break from that. Unlike me, who like I was in love with a man, I was obsessed with him. I was just like waiting till one a.m. for a sex. Just like, hey, you and me come over. Hold on, I was sitting on it, like make sure the water was clean and driving anywhere. The one way that man Uber booty called me, that fucking man. But let me talk about this. So like this man, this was D, the second boyfriend, in love with this man. Uh, fucking he called, hit me up at like one thirty a.m. He was like, hey yo, what are you doing? I'm just like, oh my god, I'm just laying in bed. I was asleep. I trained myself to wake up at one just for his text. I'm, I'm, oh, I was insane for this man. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, I'm at a friend's house. Uh, do you mind giving me a, uh, do you, do you want to meet up? I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I picked him up from his friend's house, brought him back to my place real quick. And then he was like, oh yeah, do you mind taking me home? Ha <laughs> ha. I don't have my car. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. He Uber booty called me. He used me as an Uber and paid me with dick. I'm like, how did I not see? I, 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 mm. <laughs> What? <laughs> I can't. That man. I mm, Jesus. All right. Uh, um, oh, thank you for the subscription. Uh, subscription at CK Horror. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do. Hey there. Um, check out the draws. I do feel like there is some 
melt to love language. Yeah, I think there, there is a melt there. Like, just like, you know, I do like, agree just like people receive and interpret love in different ways and they accept love and take love in different ways. Um, that definitely. Um, the love languages per se, and that's the only way you show love or the only way you receive love. Um, I don't really believe because again, if you really think about some of your relationships or it's like your true relationship, if you're, some, if you're somebody who like does have significant dates with, different amounts of people you kind of will if reflecting on it you kind of see how like there were differences and like how you interpret love from this person how you show love with this person like it does change relatively i mean there's some things that are like core to you but like sometimes it adapts like um i'm not like a gift giver really i'm not i don't know but like there's like some people i'm just like i'll get you something i'll do something for you whatever i'll do an act of service or it's like some people, I like the, uh, where's that, that affirmation? I do like, I do love the, I love me a good compliment. I love complimenting people. I do. Um, but like, you know, I, I find that I adapt differently when it comes to the different people. Um, and I think everyone kind of does, but like, we're so keen on this idea of just like love language, love languages are so set in stone that sometimes we use that as a limitation, you know, just like, oh, this person's love languages does not match my own. Therefore we don't work. But, um, People don't really try to adapt or like see how they can communicate together. So they kind of end things before it does. I, I, that's why I think there's like a double edged sword with this like new age of just like um, dating and psychology because pe people are becoming self aware, but to a point where they aren't allowing themselves to actually try <laughs> anything. They're not allowing themselves to actually to be in a relationship. Like they are trying to like date, but like, this I can't date this person because he's a Gemini. I can't date this person because our love languages don't match up. I can't date this person because our personality is like, he's an EPTS, I'm an ABCED. Like, you shouldn't have these things be limitations. You have to actually try with the person to make them work. <laughs> like, I can't put it any other way. Like, you won't really know about a person or if it can work unless you guys actually try. Like, go out, date. Don't focus so much on this, like, superfluous bullshit that we keep adding to shit. No. Go out. You like the dude? You like the girl? You like the person? Go out with them. That's it. I don't care about your fucking sign. I don't care about what, 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 you, what you smell like. Just fucking date. <laughs> Just fucking do it, guys. Jesus. Um, best lesson I learned is to say, you know, yes, same here. I used to be, um... After, I'll talk about this when I talk about trauma. Uh, <laughs> I, used to, I was basically raised to be a people pleaser, like raised to. I was programmed to be a people pleaser. That's never uh, have a narcissistic parent. Not great. Oh my God, literally same. She was just yapping and I was like, you want to break up? <laughs> like, just be honest, she said. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to look, like, just like put it in front of this person. Like, do you want to break up with me? Um, again, like when I was, and I feel like everyone kind of knows when a breakup's going to happen. Like, C knew I was going to break up with him at some point because he felt me pulling away. And I'm just like, I wanted to do it sooner, but I couldn't just because um, that person was going through a lot. And I was kind of wait. Again, there's no right part way to break up or right time to break up. You just got to do it. Just fucking do it. <laughs> it's just, you just got to fucking do it. Uh, pull the bandaid off. Don't try to like um, soften the blow. Just like be like, it's not working out. X, Y, and Z. This is why we can't do it anymore. Um, cause like this person, cause I waited and then I ended up doing it at the terrible time. Um, I ended up, um, uh, he ended up having health issues and they got worse by the time I broke up with him. And then I broke up with him and it was his health issues went bad. And then his dog almost died. It's like too much things went, but it was bad. It was a bad time, bad time. I felt terrible. It was, it was bad, but it, it had to be done. Cause like this person I felt deserved better than what I was giving them. And I deserve better than what he was giving me. Um, and same thing with um, he as well, too. Like, I kind of knew at a point, just because of how he is and who he is, that he would eventually break up with me. Um, if we like, if we don't work, he will definitely be the one to break up with me. I used to make jokes about it with him all the time. Like, you don't want to break up with me. You don't know that. He's just like, no, I'm not going to break up with you. I'm just like, this you are. <laughs> and he did. Because <laughs> just like, I was fulfilled and I was fine, but relationship is two people, two or more people. So it's like, 
I don't know how he is at. I can't read the temperature for him. And unless he communicates with me directly, I can only go off him from what I have. And I could already sense that like certain needs that he might have wasn't being filled by me. And that's, that's something I just have to accept. Um, oh, for, I'm not alone. <laughs> In the Uber booty, you you got Uber booty cold. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, I hate, I hate. Oh man, D is a mess. I love that man. I like, not like I love him, like I'm in love with him still, but like I love him as in like he's just something. Like, and that's the thing too. Like, he will always be my first love, like my first like true love with a guy. And I, he's always gonna mean something to me. He, I'm always gonna have like a weird like friend ish ship with him or cordial ship with him. Um, but like he messy. That boy messy. <laughs> like, uh, his shenanigans. Um the one problem I had with my ex was our love languages despise physical touch. I oh I despise physical physical touch. Touch is yeah, that's gonna be a factor. I uh, loved her so much that I was completely fine with physical touch. Okay. But when sometimes I would back away and ask for some space to gather some more energy should we get so upset yeah that becomes a point of just like compensating and just willing to you kind of have to like have some sort of compromise there you know uh with you and your partner because like if your need if certain needs aren't met um you just kind of have to talk about it and kind of find a resolution for it it's kind of hard with physical touch um just depends on the degree of like what necessarily to where that extends to um, I did experience that that problem, not really with physical touch, but just because certain conditions with um, C. Um, but we had the conversations, but we just never came to a conclusion. Like then we never came to a resolution. Like we had there, there was a resolution, one to lead us to still be together. But it, I don't think that person was. He would never do it. So like <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. Uh, um. CK Horror, uh, I agree. I date based on the person, not the size, languages, whatever. My last relationship was seven years and we weren't supposed to be compatible. And yeah, I mean, that's a great length for a relationship. And again, too, like, not all heartbreak are, or uh, breakups are failures. I don't think, because like some people are just, oh, we failed the relationship. We failed. <laughs> we just all this future together, but <laughs> it's fine. It's over. It's like, no. It's like, a relationship is a successful relationship is one that comes to a conclusion. Um, at least that's what I feel. Like, all relationships are temporary to an extent. Like, yes, you might want to might want to spend forever with a person, but it's it's going to end when either one of you breaks up or dies. So that's it. Like, you're either going to spend your life with a person or their life with that person, or you guys are going to break up before that. That's that's just how love works and relationships work. Um, because the idea of this, like, being in a partnership for this long and this long, long of lifetime is relatively new. Like we were supposed to be dead in our thirties. We were supposed to be dead in our fifties and now we're living to be like 93. So like, you know, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> um, you have to, you, we, there, there's new things being added to like, Oh shit, I'm still with this person. I was supposed to be dead. Fuck. <laughs> you know? Um, so like you kind of just have to, like be willing to compensate and like kind of learn with that person. And just like, if you do end a relationship and it ends in a way that's at least at a place where you both are good, then that's, I think that's kind of a success. Like if you guys really didn't have troubles or issues and you guys got to a point where you guys worked on something you couldn't work on anymore. And there wasn't infidelity. You guys weren't, um, uh, just like trying to like put your booty cheeks in someone else. I don't know what you kids are doing anymore. Um, then I, th I think that's kind of a success. Like you guys were able to fulfill everyone's ne your needs until you guys became two people that couldn't fulfill each other's needs anymore. I don't think that's a failure. I think that's just two people reaching, reaching a conclusion. You know, the book ended and now you're on to the next one. Um, I'm not going to lie. There is, are some people that put themselves in the box, especially the gay community. Well, I could, the gay community is a whole different episode. <laughs> like, that's going to be the one. You know, what's funny. I have gay friends who always just like, uh, well, big jokes. How like, I'm homophobic. I'm like, I'm homophobic. I literally, I literally do work for several like not-for-profit fucking gay organizations for gay sexual health. I'm not homophobic. But then it's like, I don't know. You just give homophobic vibes. I'm like, hey, y'all. <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I can I talk a lot about that. Um, when it comes to sex, it's like if you really like each other, love each other, you should be able to find a way to make some way work in the middle. I agree. Um, I do understand that people do have sexual preferences and people are very, very passionate about their sexual preference. But I don't think that is the say all be all of a relationship. There are other options. There are other things you can do. You have to be able to willing to compromise. And again, there's always the option to open up the relationship if it's just a sexual need that's not being fulfilled. Because if that's the case, but just like, and you're able to separate sex from feelings, sex from emotion, and you view sex as a physical act, take off some draws. Do it. It's fun. Um, anyway, guys, this was the first episode of my podcast. I'm so excited to be back. I um, I hope this day kind of works for people, but I really like doing this, really like interacting with you guys. So what's going to happen now is this video will be available on YouTube next week when my next podcast launches. For the people following my Patreon, um, all tiers, it's going to be available there first. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to put some highlights on, I guess, like TikTok or Tumblr or wherever the fuck people post now. I don't know. TikTok damn man, that's stupid. But anyway, guys, uh, I love this. Sad. I was like, it's fine. It'll be available to watch later. <laughs> so um, also, it'll be on my um, it'll be on my Twitch. So uh, I think it'll be on my Twitch for like 14 days. So yeah, 14 days to watch it. Thanks. This was wholesome, right? It's, it's different. This was like, um, I'm going to post this on my old second YouTube channel. That used to be my daily blog channel. Um, so it will be there. That's will be my Rough Run Uncut YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to like change up my videos and make it things so it like fits the formula. But like, this is season two. So if you didn't see season, season one, where I was very young and inexperienced and I some of the things I I because I rewatched, I'm just like, Andrew, you only kind of know where you're you're like you're almost you almost made a point there, but you don't have the information to back it up. <laughs> just like you're so close, you're so close, Andrew. Well like now it's just like, okay, I read books now, so I'm good. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much. I will see you guys next week.